Chapter 11, Part 1 of The Intelligence of School Children by Lewis Terman. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Leon Harvey. Chapter 11 Case Studies of 41 Superior Children. Thus far, our discussion of superior children has been impersonal and statistical. We have sought to find out what is true of such children in general as regards to their physical, mental, and moral traits, and the influences which would explain them. This chapter will be devoted to brief descriptions of typical cases, in order that teachers may see in a concrete way what the superior child is like and sense the pedagogical implications of his presence in the school. The case studies to be presented could easily have been expanded to the length of a chapter for each child, and such detailed descriptions would be of the greatest interest. Our present purpose, however, permits only summary treatment of the most salient facts regarding a limited number of typical cases. Most of the children to be described belong to the group discussed in the foregoing chapter. Apart from the results of the Binet test, the data to be set forth were in most cases furnished by teachers and parents. Their statements have been in part summarized and in part quoted, though usually with abbreviations and with omissions of secondary interest. The trait rating mentioned is always the average rating given by teacher or parent on the 20 physical and mental traits named on page 182. It will be remembered that in these ratings 1 is very superior, 2 superior, 3 average, 4 inferior, and 5 very inferior. It will be noted that in no case does the average rating of a child on the 20 traits either by parent or teacher fall as low as 3. Number 1. Boy, E.M. Illustrating exceptionally rapid school progress and unusual willpower. First test. Age, 611. Mental age, 10, 0. IQ 145, not in school. Second test, age 7, 10 and a half. Mental age, 13, 2. IQ 167, fourth grade. Third test, age 10, 0. Mental age, 16, 7. IQ 166, high eighth grade. In the second examination, age 7, 10, E passed the induction test, the arithmetical reasoning, and the clock test in year 14 the code test in six digits backwards in average adult and repeated eight digits direct order and seven digits reverse order in superior adult. When he was tested at the age of 611 and earned an IQ above 140, the prediction was made that he would be able to enter high school at the age of 11 years or possibly at the age of 10. He did so at the age of 10 five, having completed the work of eight grades in three years Practically every mark, except in handwork, has been perfect. He entered the first grade at seven and a half years. On the first day of school, he was placed in the first grade, but within an hour he was promoted to the second grade, by noon to the third, and to the fourth before the end of the school day. His teacher had studied exceptional children and was able to recognize superior ability. Under the average teacher, it would probably have taken E two years instead of one day to reach the fourth grade. E's father is a professional man, the mother a university graduate and formerly a teacher. The maternal grandmother was a university graduate and a school principal of more than ordinary ability in mathematics. E's ability in mathematics is also marked. Parents notes. Health record good. Ability is fairly general, but somewhat special. More marked along mathematical and scientific lines than others. Wonderfully adept at arranging and classifying facts. When between three and four years of age could add long numbers. Learned to read at the age of five by following his mother around and asking the names of letters, and soon afterwards surprised his parents by reading fluently out of a primer. Has had no formal home instruction, but parents have been careful to answer all his questions. Does little studying at home and reads only about seven hours per week. Spends his spare time in play, delivering papers, etc. Exceptionally dependable and takes life seriously, helps his father a great deal in the office, and can be safely entrusted with important responsibilities in the details of office work. Has sometimes to be kept out of such work because of worrying about getting it through promptly and accurately. Average parent rating on traits, 2.05. Formerly, he seems to have his hands full for the first time in his life. Growing more adaptable and agreeable. Elected to various offices in school. Parents rating on traits at this time. 2.08, about the same as before. 
Teacher's notes. Ability not altogether even. Spelling and arithmetic perfect. At the age of eight, did the work of the eighth grade in mental arithmetic tests. Has a wonderful memory for facts, but does not often ask for reasons or explanations. Ability above average in all lines, but especially so in statistics, facts, or anything capable of formal array. Can tell the study and recitation schedule of every class, and remembers the lesson assigned for all the other pupils. Can tell who missed certain words yesterday in any class. Rather enjoys the mistakes of others. Exceptionally calm and quiet. Teacher's average rating on traits, 2.10. One of the most interesting things about E is the fact that his school record has been better than that of many other superior children testing fully as high. To allow anyone to excel him in mental work. In manual training, however, his work is inferior even to that of the average child of his age. Number 2. Boy H.B. Illustrating extreme retardation in school, although nearly as bright as number 1. Age 87, mental age 12-10, IQ 150, low third grade. Vocabulary, score 44. Passed the box test and repeated six digits backward in average adult. With a mental age of nearly 13 years, H is in the grade which corresponds to his actual age of 8.5. His mother wants him to advance because, she says, he gets so tired of school when he finds that it's so easy to keep ahead of this class. However, he has only been in school one year and has been allowed to pass through two grades in five months. Parents notes. Was seriously ill for some time in his first year. Health now good, except for occasional digestive trouble. Slightly nervous. At the age of five and a half, read like an average pupil in the second grade. At seven, read everything from children's books to newspapers and magazines, reading every word and understanding the text. At five years, read numbers to the thousands. At five and a half, counted to a thousand. No special instruction beyond answering his questions in a simple, truthful, and thorough manner. Has unusual ability in oral expression. Average parent rating on traits, 2.0. Later, age nine and a half, in the high fourth grade. Health good, greatly interested in the progress of the war, inventions, conversation, etc. Doing well in piano lessons. He ranks with one other pupil as the best in his class. No homework. At ease in any group, and evidently a natural leader. Average teacher rating on traits at this time, 1.2, or considerably better than before. Teacher's notes. He is very musical. His mental ability, however, is general. Says he expects to know a lot of things. Would read continuously, if permitted. Number 3. Boy A.W. Illustrating a value of mental tests in school grading. Age 5, 8, mental age 7, 6, IQ 132, not in school. Age 6, 8, mental age 8, 8. IQ 130, second grade. At the age of 5, 8, passed all but the vocabulary test in year 8. Arranged the weights in year 9 and passed the three-word test in year 10. As a result of the test, the father, a superintendent of schools, which urged to send the boy to school at once and to see whether he was not be able to complete the first two grades in one year. A few months later, the father wrote as follows. A. is learning to read very rapidly. In four weeks, he has learned to read the entire primer of 137 pages. Four weeks ago, he could not read a line. A year later, at the age of 6, 8, A. was leading his class in the second grade, and at the age of seven years, was doing splendid work in the low third grade. The father writes at this time, A. seems more interested now than ever. School marks excellent and the work perfectly easy. It is altogether probable that before the test and for the fact that the father was superintendent of schools and therefore able to secure extra promotions, A would have gone through school without ever having an opportunity to do work commensurate with his ability. Number 4. Boy SS. Brother of RS. Number 5. Illustrated exceptional mental balance. Later development predicted. Age 4, 7, mental age 6, 8, IQ 145. Age 5, 10, mental age 8, 9, IQ 150. Age 7, 0, mental age 10, 8, IQ 153. At the time of the third test, S had not yet started to school. Vocabulary score at the age of 7, 28 words. At this time, passed four tests in year 12, including abstract words, ball and field, fables and similarities. 
in the induction test year fourteen announced the rule governing numbers of holes before the end of the experiment but was unable to double sixteen the following notation appears on the record for the first test when s was four and a half years old by eight years s will test an eleven and a half his test at the age of seven gave him a mental age of ten eight so it appears the prediction will be more than fulfilled parents notes no serious illness except the ordinary children's diseases has always shown a remarkable power of reasoning has had little home instruction but is reading in the second reader age seven he is omnivorous as to the books he once read to him french lessons twice a week and some instruction on the piano allowed to go at his own pace however we have always answered his questions truthfully and fully we have always allowed him to take the initiative have never suggested his memorizing anything have never forced anything on his attention early ambition was to be a railroad engineer recently he cherishes a hope of becoming a reformer average parent rating on traits two point zero s is a most lovable boy quiet and retiring yet not bashful his bearing is one of very modest dignity he is perfectly unspoiled father a college professor of journalistic experience mother a college graduate of unusual ability and marked musical talent several relatives of superior ability s developed much earlier in childhood than his sister who tests at one hundred forty seven and gave somewhat more evidence of superior ability number five girl r s sister of s s number four artistic ability and marked emotionality underrated by parents age four ten mental age seven one i q one hundred and forty seven not in school wonderfully responsive full of life and the picture of health talked most charmingly and without a lack of self-consciousness all the way from her home to the laboratory where she was to be tested although less than five years old she passed the test of arranging weights in year nine the parents were greatly surprised that her i q equalled that of her brother they had probably not made sufficient allowance for the difference in age parents notes ara's aptitude is described by her parents as being in the direction of artistic expression she sings wonderfully true to time and key and dances with natural grace she has acquired a sureness of stroke in drawing which an equal amount of montessori training never gave her brother she has natural dramatic ability but lacks the development of abstract thinking which characterized her brother she has never been asked to learn anything although her questions have always been answered fully and truthfully however she has never asked as many or varied questions as her brother from whom she has learned most of what she knows average parent rating on traits two point eight five obedience and emotional self-control were both rated five ira is said to be emotional impatient and inclined to fly into fits of screaming if things displease her play life normal number six boy j s lovable disposition indications of literary ability age eight two mental age eleven four i q one hundred and thirty eight high fourth grade age eleven zero mental age fifteen two IQ 136, high 7th grade, age 12, 3, mental age 17, 7, IQ 144, high school. J's IQ is by no means as high as many others we have found, but he has such a winning personality, charming disposition, and uniform ability that we consider him one of our most promising superiors. The father was a man of superior ability, and the mother had been secretary of a large business firm. Both parents died several years ago, and Jay has been reared by his aunt. On his twelfth birthday, Jay handed his aunt a beautiful letter, which he had written on his own initiative to express his appreciation of the way she had cared for him. This is typical of his loving and lovable disposition. Jay's unusual talent for writing is shown by the following poems written before his eighth birthday. They are reproduced without change of spelling or punctuation. Christmas Hurrah for Christmas and all its joys! They come that day for girls and boys. Flowers. Flowers in the garden, that is all you see. Who likes them best? That's the honey bee. My mother's busy. My mother is very busy today, and all I have to do is play. If I only know what she had to do, I'd like to help her, wouldn't you? What a trouble washing day, and since my mother can never play, I wonder if she'll get tired out from walking, walking all about. Here is Sunday, resting day. That's the best thing I can say. We go to church and pray and pray. That's the hardest thing I say. 
Before the age of eight, J amused himself by writing fables to which he always attached a correct moral. The following is a sample. A Fable The Selfish Boy and the Poor Girl Once there was a rich boy in a city, and he went into a candy store and bought some candy. When he came out, he still had a lot of money. While he was walking down the street, he met a little girl selling shoelaces. He just kept on eating candy and did not buy anything from her or even offer her a piece of candy. About a month later, the rich boy's house was robbed and this little girl was getting a lot of money. The boy now had to go around selling and he met the girl many times, but she never helped him because when she had been poor, he did not help her. Moral Those you do not help will not help you. Number 7. Boy T.B. All round ability with special interest in medicine. Musical family. Age 10, 5. Mental age 15, 2. IQ 146, 6th grade. Vocabulary score 64, which is practically median for mental age 16. Pass the ingenuity test in superior adult. Father French, mother American. A great grand uncle was Meyerbeer, the French composer. Another uncle is a locally well known violinist and composer. Parents notes. T has always been perfectly healthy, except for slight nervousness. Somewhat myoptic. Learned to talk at seven months. School work easily. Does little homework except in the practice of music, of which he is very fond. Shows a remarkable interest in medical science. All his childish games and all his reading have tended in this direction almost from the time he could talk. Have tried to hold him back because of his tender age and temperament. Although healthy, he has always been high-strung. Chief indications of superiority, his passionate desire to learn, and his obsession for medicine. Teacher's Notes School work excellent, except drawing. T expresses his thoughts on any subject in a marvellous way for a boy of his age. He is capable both in his oral and written work, very studious and interested in his work. His power of attention sometimes seems lacking, but when I have called it to his attention on certain occasions, he has said, I was only daydreaming. Very adaptable socially absolutely unspoiled very conscientious and unassuming enjoys reading medical works especially in the surgical line reads from a medical encyclopedia also studies electricity and likes to experiment very strong sense of truth and marked straightforwardness t is probably one of the most promising of our superiors his interest in medicine was evident in the sixty word test in which he gave the names of numerous bones muscles and other organs of the body we have here not a case of one-sided ability, but a mind of very superior general ability focused upon a special subject. Number 8. Boy, P.T. Ordinary parents and dull brother. Age 11-11, eleven, eleven, mental age 17-7, seven, seven, IQ 148, low 8th grade. This boy is especially interesting because of the contrast with his brother, who at the age of 6-10 tests at mental age 5-8, IQ 83. The parents say the two children are absolutely unlike, and the verdict of the tests agrees with this opinion. The father is a carpenter. Neither parent has had more than a common school education, but the mother is somewhat above average in intelligence. A distant relative of the mother was a high official in the Methodist Episcopal Church, and a relative of the father was an Archbishop of Scotland. Parents Notes P shows unusual ability in all of his schoolwork and also in music. He succeeds in everything he undertakes. When he was 22 months old, he knew the names of the important buildings in San Francisco and could point them out in a photograph of the city. Was never taught at home beyond the alphabet. Health record good. Desires to become a mechanical engineer. The younger brother expects to be a farmer. Average parent rating on traits, 1.6. One year later, age 13. Excellent record continued in every respect. This time the mother rates a child 1 on every trait. She is probably realising more and more the contrast with the younger brother. Teacher's Notes All round ability. A is a great reader and a most satisfactory pupil. Teacher's rating was one on all but two of the traits. Number 9 and number 10. C, D and L, D. Brother and sister. Exceptional children of ordinary parents. C. Aged 14, 6. Mental age 19, 0. IQ 131, third year high school. L. Age 10. Mental age 13.8. IQ 137. High 5th grade. C. 
made the remarkable vocabulary score of 82 words which equals that of the average university senior. He has reached a stage of development where the Stanford Binet falls short of being an adequate measure. A brother of C and L is in the 7th grade at the age of 11, and a sister is in the 2nd grade at the age of 7. Neither has been tested, but both are said to be as bright as C and L. In one respect, this is the most interesting family of children of whom we have record. The father is a barber. The mother was a tailoress before marriage, and not a single known relative has had more than a common school education or intelligence above the ordinary. Each of the four children belongs to a grade of superiority not encountered oftener, on an average, than once among one hundred children. Parents' Notes C's health is perfect except for myopia and slight headaches. Entered second grade at the age of six and shortly afterwards skipped to third. Spends all his spare time in reading. Learned the alphabet at two years and could read books and newspapers at three. Special ability in mathematics. No special instruction, but has been encouraged. L is more sociable, talkative and active than C. Her health is very good and her school work gives her no trouble. She is less studious than C, but gave in childhood similar indications of superiority. Teacher's Notes The teacher says regarding C, high standing in class. I would cite as evidence of unusual talent his answers to questions purposed during the lessons, which are almost invariably in a single short sentence covering completely the ground. Social adaptability inferior, is pensive, very shy, and retiring in a crowd of boys. Remarkable power of concentration. L is described by her teacher as exceptionally quick and accurate in her work and alert to everything. First test, age 7, 8, mental age 12, 4, IQ 161, high third grade. Vocabulary score in this test was 40, median for 12 years. The induction test in year 14 and the box test in average adult were both passed. Second test, age 9, 4, mental age 15, 7, IQ 167, low sixth grade. In the second test, the vocabulary score was 56. The fables, box, and code tests of average adult and the paper-cutting tests and abstract passages of superior adult were passed. B's father is an able minister, and the mother is a woman of exceptional intellect and personal qualities. The following statement by the parents illustrate how the superior child in a superior home is likely to be underrated because of the high standard by which he is judged. His development has seemed to us quite normal and even. We are not thought of him as much above the average in intelligence. Mother. Really, Mrs. F., and I think that some mistake has probably been made in the observation upon which your rating is based. While B is an alert, good, and thoroughly satisfactory boy, we have never thought of him as considerably above the average in mentality. We have tried to be good parents to him, provoking inquiry, answering questions, and giving him opportunity for a variety of experiences that would furnish raw material for his ideas. Father. Nevertheless, B has a grade of intelligence which is probably not equaled by more than one child in 5,000. Parents Notes B has never been seriously ill, but there is a slight tendency to stutter when he is excited. Learn to read at 5. At 7 read Hiawatha and committed 150 lines of the poem to memory. Does no home study and reads only about half hour per day. Spends hours after school in outdoor play, marbles, football, and baseball. Also practices on the piano. Has an unusual fund of information in history and current events. Catches impressions easily. Many interests. Allowed to go his own pace in school and has had no formal instruction in the home. Wants to go through college and become a minister. Takes his place well among other children without being a leader. Two years later, age 11, the mother writes that notwithstanding a change of schools, the teacher considers B ready for the 8th grade. School work easier than ever. Shows a growing interest in world problems. Average parent rating on traits at this time, 1.75. Teacher's Notes Unusual ability in reasoning and an exceptional fund of general information. Also considerable ability in music. In two and a half years has almost completed six grades. Remarkably attractive and alert. Not particularly handsome, rather delicate in appearance, but vigorous in his play and a favourite with the children who congregate in his yard. Rated one by the teacher on every one of the twenty traits. The only one of our superior children with whom this occurs. At the time of the first test, B was above twelve years in mentality, but was in the high third grade. On the showing made in the test, we urged the father to try to secure an extra promotion. This was done, and the results fully justify the recommendation. In all, B has skipped four half-grades and still continues to secure perfect marks. 
Number 12. Boy, L. M. Brother of number 13. Underestimated by parents. Morally superior. Age 6, 8.5. Mental age 9, 5. IQ 140. First grade. Age 9, 6. Mental age 15, 1. IQ 159. Fifth grade. At 9, 6, L passed the code and box tests of average adult, also repeated eight digits, and did the ingenuity problem in superior adult. There are five children in this family, all above average. One earned A marks all through his high school and graduated at 17, winning a college scholarship. Father, a minister of exceptional ability. Parents notes. Average parent rating on traits, 3.21. Health good. First showed unusual ability in arithmetic at the age of three years. Has been allowed to go his own pace except as older sister taught him in playing school. L has a way of making for what he wants regardless of obstacles. One year later, age ten and a half, not robust. Out of school because of unsatisfactory general health. Brain and ambition out of proportion to strength, but is improving. His interest take in the whole world. Prohibition, Red Cross, YMCA, Boy Scouts, Athletics. Gives morality talks to anyone he thinks in need of them. Walks miles distributing literature for all the drives. Has a circulating library of about 50 volumes in constant use among the neighbour children, for which he keeps the accounts carefully and systematically. Remarkable in his choice of books, has never even by chance brought home from the public library an undesirable book. School marks continue good. School work rather laborious, as he has little patience with details and makes careless mistakes. Average rating on traits now 2.2. .2 considerably higher than before teachers notes all round ability without self-consciousness and speaks well before the class number thirteen girl c m sister of number twelve early indications of superior ability age seven six mental age eleven ten i q one hundred and fifty eight fifth grade pass the box test and average adult parents notes average parent rating one point nine five Health perfect, has abnormal physical strength. Before we knew it, soon after her sixth birthday, she read and enjoyed the courtship of Miles Standish, saying she thought it was such beautiful language. About the same time, she wrote little two-page stories. Intelligence was also evident in clearness of answers in conversation, fine reasoning powers and right conclusions. Superiority noted at four years. Allowed to go her own pace. No home instruction except what she received from a very bright older sister who played school and gave her good instruction in drawing reading and numbers reads good poetry the bible then classics all of which she thoroughly understands and enjoys one year later age eight and a half robust health highest school marks leadership marked average rating now one point five number fourteen boy j c a case of exceptional all-round mental precocity a leader Age 11, 4. Mental age 17, 9. IQ 156. Seventh grade. Although only a little more than 11 years old, Jay's vocabulary score was 75. He passed all but the paper cutting and ingenuity tests in the superior adult group. As a result of the test, he was promoted to the eighth grade. Mother's notes. Jay could talk before he was a year old and could stand at seven months and run at ten months. He read Ivanhoe at the age of seven has seemed always to read and study, has always been a big boy to me, of quiet disposition, with a touch of vanity, has the dictionary habit and is an omnivorous reader, spends much time with the encyclopedias, excellent health, has become interested in athletics and other boyish matters, masters his schoolwork with apparent ease, adapts himself to any personal crowd, leads in educational games and is often chosen as leader, even temper, sympathetic, considerate, generous, and kind-hearted. Expects to go to college and take up scientific agriculture. Average parent rating, 1.65. Number 15. Boy GG. Illustrating all-round superiority and marked precocity. Age 12, 0. Mental age 16, 8. IQ 139. 8th grade. Teacher's notes. A problem is never given that G will not try. He always wants to know why and will stick to his view until it is proved incorrect. Has ambition to succeed and be the first in his class. Sense of humour far beyond his years. Has a splendid command of language. 
his ability is general has some trouble getting on with the large boys because he still has childish ideas about some things but takes things good-naturedly and goes right on he is one of the best all-round superior children i have ever had in eighteen years of experience as a teacher average teacher rating on traits two point one parents notes health good sleeps ten hours reads shakespeare the book of knowledge and nature books some musical ability especially fond of arithmetic and history memory exceptionally good at three years he loved to be read to and could quote many nursery rhymes at four he quoted several long stories word for word at five he could print the alphabet and insisted on being told how to spell words no formal instruction before going to school since then he has gone his own pace his questions have been answered clearly and current events have been discussed in his presence he is much interested in machinery understands fairly well motor-car construction one year later age thirteen did not attend school last year because of a large cervical gland which necessitated an operation health is good now greater interest in outside activities and athletics plays piano and cornet does his school work with ease school adaptability improved is less nervous than formerly average parent rating two point one number sixteen girl c g illustrating marked leadership and social adaptability age thirteen nine mental age nineteen one i q one hundred and thirty nine fourth year of high school c lives in a city in the northern part of california when we visited there and acquired for the brightest pupil in the city schools the superintendent and teachers mentioned c without hesitation arrangements were made with the mother for testing her the following day on the next day however c had come down with an attack of measles and had a high fever notwithstanding this she wanted to go on with the test which was given with the result noted above all the tests in the stanford binner were passed with one exception the box test in average adult c taught herself to read when she was thirty-one months old she started to school at the age of six and in seven and a half years had completed the work of twelve grades throughout she had led her classes she is also a leader on all kinds of school activities such as dramatics and class activities she is a favorite both with fellow pupils and teachers physically she is more than ordinarily mature for her age her health has always been perfect all her extra promotions have been given on the initiative of her teachers the parents having always urged them to hold her back expects to be a lawyer c's sister graduated from university at twenty one and was president of the student body later did postgraduate work another sister of eleven and a half years is in the low eighth grade a brother graduated from university at twenty and at twenty four is holding a responsible business position it is doubtless this high standard of ability in the home which accounts for the average parent rating on traits of two point four five or only a little above average number seventeen girl k c exceptional personal charm indications of musical ability a social favorite age three two mental age four eight i q one hundred and forty four not in school age five two mental age seven four i q one hundred and forty two not in school age six four mental age eight ten i q one hundred and forty first grade at the age of five k counted backwards from twenty to one gave definition superior to use and arranged the five weights this test was given as a demonstration test before a dozen university students k liked the test so well that when it was over she did not want to leave one of the most charming little girls we have ever known absolutely unspoiled and lacking in any appearance of self-consciousness she sang beautifully at the age of three learned to name the colours the days of the week and the months of the year on her own initiative and simply by asking questions her father is a college professor both father and mother have several relatives of superior ability parents notes nothing unusual in early childhood except that her development has been somewhat rapid she spoke a few words at ten months play life and social relations perfectly normal a favorite and takes the lead in play exceptional musical ability and interest in colors alive to everything around her seems to want to know everything she hears talked about allowed to go her own pace but information she asks for is never withheld no formal instruction average parent rating two point zero a year later k's health remains perfect her interests are broadening and she is developing marked traits in leadership average parent rating at this time one point nine five number eighteen boy s d splendid heredity 
all round ability and exceptional courage age seven five mental age ten ten i q one hundred and forty six third grade second test age ten zero mental age fifteen one i q one hundred and fifty one seventh grade the great-grandfather of s was a chum of abraham lincoln and a candidate for the united states senator when he died at the age of thirty-five the brother of this relative was a noted attorney father of s is also an attorney the mother a high school teacher a cousin on the mother's side is in the third year of high school at the age of thirteen years several uncles of this mother were political leaders in the early history of kentucky teacher's notes i cannot say that s has unusual talent of any special kind he simply has a big mind and a big body ability is all round superior average teacher rating on traits one point five one of the highest ratings we have found parents notes health has always been perfect spoke a few words at six months entered the third grade at seven years and in two and a half years covered four and a half grades learned to read at the age of five does no regular study at home but reads about half an hour each evening holidays spent in play chores fishing and swimming no formal instruction in childhood but has been encouraged to stand at the head of his class average parent rating on traits one point eight five one year later age eleven three in eighth grade doing excellent work health good and development satisfactory in every way average parent rating at this time two point one in rating courage the mother made the following remark all i can say about this is that s when only ten years old entered a burning building and brought out a baby then re-entered and dragged out a wooden chest and was ready to enter again when i had hold him force while the roof fell in number nineteen boy r v early evidence of superiority natural interest in teaching age eleven seven mental age sixteen six i q one hundred and forty two high seventh grade father a carpenter with only a common school education the mother a teacher before marriage there are seven children all of whom are superior parents notes health good except for an attack of acute rheumatism when he was six years old taught himself to read with the aid of a telephone book and calendar loves to teach has prepared several children in the neighborhood for school superiority first evident at the age of four no instruction in childhood we wanted him to be outdoors and build up a good constitution r is quite up to the times in politics and war joins in the discussions on these topics sign the prohibition pledge at sunday school and will not eat anything that has brandy in it ambition to write books average parent rating on traits one point nine one year later age twelve and a half health good school work very good leads among the boys in the neighbourhood rather impatient and quick to anger but soon recovers his poise parent rating at this time two point zero teacher average ratings on traits one point five nine number twenty boy f h one of our brightest children all round ability and very exceptional vocabulary age ten five mental age seventeen eleven i q one hundred and seventy two high fifth grade vocabulary score was seventy eight fourteen thousand words this is almost equal to that of the average college student every test was passed in year fourteen four out of the six in average adult and five out of the six in superior adult every fable was perfectly interpreted father a physician mother had only a common school education several superior relatives a brother testing at one hundred and thirty seven parents notes entered the first grade at five ability general superiority first evidenced at the age of six by his unusual interest in schoolwork and by his original thinking he has never been specially stimulated allowed to go his own pace because that was fast enough average rating by parents one point seven five the teacher describes f as having wonderful all-round ability and gives him an average rating of one point three number twenty one and twenty two j j and b j italian children brother and sister boy j age nine zero mental age twelve seven i q one hundred and forty girl b age six eight mental age ten one i q one hundred and fifty one here are two italian children the only ones of this nationality we have discovered testing anything like this high both are exceptionally attractive polished yet natural in manners beautiful and unspoiled j is described as more studiously inclined than b and as being also more sensitive 
Mother was inclined to believe the boy with the brighter of the two, but the test places the girl slightly above. Both parents are well educated. Three of the four grandparents are described in such terms as extremely bright, keen reader, interested in history and international affairs, etc. The paternal grandfather was an able linguist and scientist, a member of the Royal Geographic Society, and a talented singer. Many relatives of culture and learning on both sides. Jay did not learn to talk until he was two years old. He is somewhat emotional, but general health is good. Sleeps eleven and a half hours. Learned to read at the age of five years. At this age, about one hour daily was given to instruction in reading and writing. We never forced him, but always let him know there is a premium on fine scholarship. At the age of six, was tutored about two and a half hours daily. Has never attended school, especially talented in music. Plays well and has a keen sense of harmony. B learned to read at the age of five and a half and was able to read the fourth reader at the age of six too. Superiority shown in her keen observation and her understanding of human character. This was noticeable at the age of four or even younger. Like her brother, has been allowed to go her own pace. Number 23. Girl. M.S. A typical illustration of the ease with which superior children learn without instruction. Age 8-3. Mental age 12-1. IQ 146, fifth grade. Passed the fable test and repeated six digits backwards in average adult. Mother's Notes M learned to read without any instruction at the age of three years. Read signs and advertisements and names on food packages which were frequently seen about the house. At six years, read better and more naturally than since listening to other children at school. Has dramatic ability. Shows remarkable grasp of all instructions and is good in execution. Makes progress two or three times as rapidly as ordinary children. M has just grown up as I have had continual illness in the home and have been unable to give her the attention she should have had. I held her back from skipping the fifth grade because I felt that physical perfection was a first consideration. Health always good. Wishes to become a teacher or to take up dramatics. Mother believes she could also succeed in business. Letter age nine and a half in sixth grade. Health and school work A1. A born leader, but a little too dogmatic and positive to be socially popular. Number 24. Girl, MS. General ability combined with talent and art. Exceptional heredity. Age 9 1. Mental age 12 10. IQ 141. Low fifth grade. Passed the fable test in average adult and the eight digits in superior adult. One grandfather a banker, the other a railway official, both educated, intelligent men. Both grandmothers described as well educated and very keen. On the mother's side, James McNeil Whistler, the noted artist, was a cousin of the child's grandfather. Several other relatives on this side had exceptional mental ability and physical endowment. On the father's side, an uncle gifted as a sculptor and painter, several very bright cousins. Parents Notes Parents rated M one on every trait except courage and intellectual modesty, which they rated two. Physical condition has always been perfect. Observant, excellent memory, craving for knowledge. Has great enthusiasm for beautiful scenery, sunsets, and other beauties of nature. Is fond of animals. Superiority noted at the age of four. Encouraged to go ahead in school, but not forced. Has been praised for good report cards. No formal instruction, whatever at home. Ambitious in everything she attempts wants to be a teacher one year later age ten two the mother writes health good she awakens more and more to beauty takes great pride in her work and shows great love for reading all of her work a pleasure except arithmetic i wish arithmetic were a little more practical makes friends easily and is very companionable with older children wants to draw and loves scenery and pictures her best chum is a schoolgirl of fifteen years average parent rating at this time, 1.6. Teacher's Notes Unusual ability to carry a melody in two-part singing. Reads music well. Exceptionally good in penmanship. Superiority general. The teacher rated all the traits one except general health. Number 25. Boy A.W. Brother of number 26. Underestimated by teacher and dislikes school. Very sensitive. Age 13.1. Mental age 18.6. IQ 141. Low 7th grade. A's vocabulary score was 84, which is equal to that of the average Stanford University senior. 
missed only two tests in the scale the ingenuity test and repeating seven digits backwards both a and his sister are very superior but a seems to be more original and better informed until a few months ago before the test a had always attended a country school his grades in school are good but not exceptionally superior he has no hesitation in saying that it is not particularly like school. The teacher rated him three, average, on all but two of the twenty traits. She sees nothing exceptional in this boy's mentality, although he is better informed and has a larger command of language than the average teacher. One wonders whether the teacher's misunderstanding has anything to do with the boy's dislike of school. Parents' Notes Health good except for Coria, which has now practically disappeared. As a small child, he was very timid, and he is still sensitive remarkable memory which first showed itself at the age of four when he learned his story books by heart at that age he also learned most of poe's the bells has always used big words correctly learned to read at the age of six and a half in three or four months he could read all of riley's child rhymes from the time when he was a young child a has seemed to have understanding and knowledge in almost everything beyond his years draws exceptionally well and has mechanical ability at four years could repeat verbatim pages and pages of books of which were read to him allowed to go his own pace because of his tendency to nervousness the only instruction has been in the form of answering innumerable questions several relatives of very superior ability average parent rating on traits two point zero five letter age fourteen two health good school marks improved school work easier less nervous number twenty six girl e w sister of number twenty five age eleven five mental age sixteen eleven i q one hundred and forty eight high seventh grade all the tests in average adult pass except the code eight digits direct order and seven digits reverse passed in superior adult parents notes age of talking twenty months health excellent has always been intellectually alert beyond her years ambitious to excel is very practical has always had an excellent memory and early learned nursery rhymes and jingles superiority first noticed at the age of four is musical allowed to go her own pace as she seems inclined to go quite as fast as is good for her no formal instruction at home desires to become a teacher number twenty seven boy r k exceptional heredity age eight nine mental age twelve four i q one hundred and forty one fourth grade age eleven four mental age sixteen eight i q one hundred and forty seven high seventh grade father a mining engineer mother a teacher paternal grandfather a teacher of superior ability one uncle a doctor of divinity and a bright scholar one cousin is a mechanical engineer of exceptional ability another cousin a postgraduate of harvard is said to be one of the best mathematicians that harvard has had in years relatives father back on this side were roger williams and colonel crawford maternal grandfather a teacher and lawyer of ability maternal grandmother a teacher and a great student up to the age of eighty years two uncles and one aunt on this side had exceptional mental ability one cousin is an artist of ability and another a talented singer washington irving was a cousin of the great-grandfather another noted relative further back was an earl of kilnockie parents notes r is somewhat nervous otherwise health is perfect nothing unusual in early life entered the second grade at six years and later skipped half of the fourth and half of the sixth never urged on best work is in english and music in his compositions shows unusual appreciation of language he is ambitious to write average parent rating on traits one point five one year later age twelve six r is finishing the eighth grade with excellent marks work very easy for him health good average parent rating at this time one point seven number twenty eight boy j p underestimated by parents an exceptionally logical mind age eight one mental age ten ten i q one hundred and thirty four third grade age nine two mental age thirteen zero i q one hundred and forty one fifth grade age eleven four mental age fifteen six i q one hundred and thirty seven seventh grade parents notes the father a college professor was slow to believe that j was much above the average child in ability he has no brothers or sisters and the parents had no general standard by which to judge him average parent rating two point four four nothing unusual in early life health or training was taught to read at the age of six but has had no formal instruction 
Two years later, age 11. Health good. Tonsils recently removed. School work done without effort. Somewhat nervous and sensitive. Average parent rating at this time 2.2, or somewhat higher than before. Teacher's Notes J can stagger you with astronomical facts, delights in historical stories, is not contented with statements made in the text, but wants detailed information, questions everything, loves an argument and debates with zeal and ability, was wildly happy when appointed to lead a debate, has a code and loves secrets, his mind is alert to every impression. His hands are not responsive. He dislikes to write or draw, but grits his teeth and does average work to avoid having to do it over. Reasoning is his strong point. He can read any book and repeat the substance of it months afterwards. Social adaptability normal, but rather prefers to play alone. Does not care for conventionalities. Has an unusual sense of justice. Average teacher rating 2.0. End of chapter 11, part 1 of The Intelligence of School Children Read by Leon Harvey Chapter 11, Part 2 of The Intelligence of School Children by Lewis Terman This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Read by Leon Harvey Case Studies of 41 Superior Children, Part 2 Number 29. Boy, B.H. Very much underrated by his teacher. Age 9-7. Mental age 13-10. IQ 144. Low 5th grade. The interesting thing about this child is that the teacher considers his ability average except in language. As a matter of fact, he is farther advanced in vocabulary than in his general mental development. He is underage for his grade and has been rated by the teacher in comparison with children two and three years older. Fortunate Heredity Two uncles on the mother's side, unusually intelligent. One was a prominent lawyer when he died at the age of 35. The other entered high school at 11 and is now editor of a large city newspaper. A great-great-uncle of the boy was a doctor of divinity and one of the foremost of pulpit orators in the South. B. Has two brothers almost as bright as himself. Parents' Notes Health perfect, but sleep not very sound. Have encouraged him because he is ambitious. Was given no home instruction except for about a year when he started to school. Average rating on traits, 2.65. One year later, age ten and a half. School work good except that his penmanship is poor and his written work somewhat untidy. This sometimes lowers his grades. Improvement in social adaptability. Average parent rating at this time, 2.45. Number 30. Boy, L.G. Underrated by parents. An only child. Marked precocity. Age 8.3. Mental age 12.2. IQ 142. High fourth grade. Passed the clock test and the induction test in 14 and the average adult repeated six digits backwards. Vocabulary score, however, only 25, which is not more than a year above his actual age. The most interesting thing in the data furnished by the parents is the fact that they rate the child 3, or average, on 18 out of 20 traits. One wonders whether this is because L is an only child and there is no standard of comparison in the home. The average teacher rating is 2.20. Parents notes, health good, learn to read at the age of 4, above average in power of concentration, Became interested in books at the age of two years. Was persistent in effort to understand meaning of words and characters. Memorized and recited readily at the age of two years. Have not encouraged him to forge ahead, but have not held him back. Little instruction at home beyond the teaching of sounds of letters. Have also tried to answer all his questions and to point the way to further investigation. We think the child has a tendency to read too much. Number 31. Boy, C.M. Underrated by teacher. Exceptional heredity. Age 86. Mental age 12-0. IQ 141. High fourth grade. This case is mentioned chiefly because of the following statement of his teacher. I would say, taking my class as a basis of judgment, that C. is an average child. The teacher admits that he is doing excellent work in the high fourth grade. Also, that the class is an unusually satisfactory one. She neglects to note that the average age in her class is about 10 years, while that C is only 8.5. 
a sister of fifteen is almost as bright as c the father is a minister a graduate of a theological seminary maternal grandfather an army officer and graduate of oxford maternal grandmother very musical of eight uncles two were able lawyers and three were successful engineers the mother's grandfather was one of the most prominent canadian statesmen of his day paternal grandfather a college graduate paternal grandmother musical the only uncle on this side is an expert chemist whose sons show unusual ability in literary lines the father's grandfather was one of the leading spirits in the old hudson bay company number thirty two girl m c brightest girl in the stanford records superior family of children ordinary heredity age seven ten mental age thirteen eight i q one hundred and seventy four fifth grade this child tested by miss blanche cummings director of special classes in fresno california is the brightest girl of whom we have a record at stanford university her development will be carefully followed the father is a jeweler the mother was a milliner before marriage neither parent had more than a common school education there are three other remarkable children in the family a sister age eleven in the seventh grade a brother age ten in the fifth grade and a brother age six in the second grade the last name tested at one hundred and thirty six no other relatives of superior ability are known to the parents parents notes nothing unusual on health or physical development in early childhood was given no instruction but learned to read by her own efforts at three years was permitted to use a typewriter and with it learned her letters figures reading and spelling entered school only a year and a half ago and has attended four different schools notwithstanding these frequent changes she has made five grades in that time with ease m is more inclined to be firm and stubborn than other children desires to become a school teacher average parent rating two point seven number thirty three boy p a early indications of superior intelligence apparent moral inferiority age nine five mental age thirteen nine i q one hundred and forty six seventh grade age eleven three mental age sixteen ten i q one hundred and fifty first year high school both parents physicians maternal grandfather a journalist and politician who knew seven languages a cousin on the mother's side is said to be as bright as p mother's relatives chiefly doctors lawyers and ministers parents notes p knew his letters at fourteen months and could read at two years learned to count at the age of two years a little later knew numbers as far as the thousands and could find numbers in the telephone book when four years and three months old had read a good part of the bible and read as well as a boy of thirteen always insisted until told what he wanted to know entered the third grade when he started his school at six and made nine grades in four and a half years memorizes very rapidly once became possessed of a desire to know the location of every town river and mountain and read the atlas through great collector of stamps coins foreign transfers etc i have encouraged him i consider a child may just as well be learning something as to fool away his time i never made him study while he was a, a small child i bought blocks with letters and numbers maps to be put together geographical games alphabetical and numerical boards while he was a small child i bought blocks with letters and numbers maps to be put together geographical games alphabetical and numerical boards and other playthings with which to learn later bought him a typewriter which he soon learned to use play life fairly normal but made difficult by the fact that his classmates are much older and larger with them he cannot be a leader well with younger children he is somewhat domineering and bossy obeys while at school but is rather selfish and imperious at times the mother accounts for this by the fact that he is an only child and has been allowed his own way mother's average rating on traits two point seven desires to become a professor of mathematics and english letter age twelve was out of school last term and worked as a collector for a newspaper making twenty five dollars a month his vocational ambition now is to be a banker school marks still excellent but hardly as good as before still somewhat spoiled selfish and occasionally unkind in his criticisms of others compels boys of his size to do as he says strong-willed punishes himself rather than give in needs a man's influence notes from school principal undoubtedly great native intelligence seems very learned his ability is certainly general often appears not to be attentive but later surprises one by being able to repeat everything that has been said however is spoiled in vain and is looked upon with a certain amount of distrust 
is said to have abnormal sex interests once attacked a small boy with a knife effulsively affectionate towards his teacher but disrespectful towards his parents stubborn and willful his school conduct however absolutely beyond reproach teacher's notes ability rather one-sided remarkable memory for facts but lack of judgment has few playmates reputed to be a bully among younger children although he did not show this at school is tyrannical towards his mother and grandmother average rating two point eight nine another teacher states his analysis interpretation and memory for detail in julius caesar and ivanhoe have been far above the average of his class this teacher described p's ability as general rather than special and gave an average rating on traits of one point five five there is no question about this boy's unusual ability some would perhaps account for it on the ground of his early instruction but we doubt the validity of such an explanation the boy's social and moral development does not promise well although his present objectionable tendencies may be outgrown later this is our only superior who has evidence questionable moral traits number thirty four boy h h early instruction accompanied by marked indications of superior intelligence age six zero mental age nine four i q one hundred and fifty six age eight nine mental age twelve ten i q one hundred and forty seven seventh grade in the second test age eight nine vocabulary score was fifty five nearly ten thousand words this is better than the median for fourteen years little is known of the ancestors of h except that both of his grandfathers were farmers with only a common school education one distant relative was a lawyer of national reputation the father is a teacher and the mother a woman of marked intellectuality the accomplishments of h were exploited in a number of newspapers in nineteen twelve to thirteen parents notes was specially instructed in early childhood by the mother who early began reading to him such literature as Hiawatha, julius caesar bible stories etc learned to read at four at six was able to add subtract multiply and divide numbers as far as the millions to keep the family accounts make up bills etc mastered the number of combinations by playing dominoes and learned a great deal of geography by playing post office and writing addresses on envelopes which he gave to his mother has accumulated a rich store of knowledge about nature all his work is play to him plays the piano quite remarkably for a child of his age later age eight not specially fond of school does little home study reads only three or four hours a week spends most of his time at play mother's rating on traits two point one teacher's notes a very lovable child and below average only in leadership and initiative wonderful knowledge of history he is always ready with stories to illustrate a point especially good in oral composition large fine of general information ability slightly one-sided does not seem to fit in with the play life of his classmates reads a great deal including dixon's novels shakespeare's stories and child verses rather restless exceptionally poor in writing and other handwork but amazes one with his knowledge of historical events average rating on traits one point nine five later age nine ten described by the succeeding teacher as in good health growing very rapidly and more interested in play and companions marks still high improvement now in social adaptability average rating on traits at this time two point one when he came to us a little over a year ago he was extremely restless and timid spoke in very low tones flushed easily and never volunteered remarks recently he has relaxed plays ball worships the big boys and has sprouted physically with this has come a sudden interest in assigned tasks which seem very promising for the future number thirty five girl e w ill health all round ability exceptional heredity age fourteen two mental age nineteen i q one hundred and thirty four high seventh grade e is in the grade corresponding to chronological age however she was out for two years at one time and is missed at other times on account of illness although she has attended school only intermittently for five years in this time she has completed seven grades considering her health it is perhaps best that she has not been promoted more rapidly the teacher says no matter what e has to do it is always well done she has a wonderful power of concentration a keen sense of humor and never gives up until the battle is won her examination papers are a wonder to her teachers 
they are always on the point and definite e has decidedly all-round ability the teacher rated her one on every trait except general health parents notes a good deal of ill health from three to ten years somewhat nervous and irritable when fatigued reads as many hours as we allow has spent many happy hours delving into children's encyclopedias never had any formal instruction at home one sister and one brother of little if any more than average ability e has always been first to grasp the meaning of a game puzzle or any subject under discussion average parent ratings on traits one point six five one year later age fifteen four health not quite so good marks satisfactory but not quite as high as formerly inclined to worry over his schoolwork average rating now one point nine five the maternal grandfather was a school teacher of fine ability maternal grandmother a student to the age of eighty two uncles are successful professional and businessmen one aunt a talented musician the mother's brother was a leader in his university class but became insane the paternal grandfather and grandmother were school teachers one uncle on this side is a lawyer and judge e's great-grandfather served the longest term in the new york state legislature of any man up to his time of two other relatives on this side one was a noted congregational minister in new york city the other a famous surgeon number thirty six boy j e exceptional heredity difficulty in social adjustments age eleven zero mental age sixteen one i q one hundred and forty six school work irregular but chiefly in the fifth and sixth grades j made the remarkable vocabulary record of seventy four correct definitions he also passed the test of repeating eight digits in superior adult has been kept back in his studies by ill health incipient kidney trouble from which he has largely recovered at the age of fifteen has been educated by a governess in private schools teachers consider him very unusual in ability but hardly up to average in social adaptability j's greatest difficulty has been in submitting to formal instruction and in adapting himself to other children until eleven years old he had but few opportunities to associate with others and was considered more or less erratic his social adaptability however has steadily improved as has also his tendency towards irritability and imperiousness both of jay's parents are of english descent the father is a scientist educator and publicist two of jay's brothers are of average mentality one sister now dead was very superior and another sister is a woman of very exceptional ability a number of superior relatives on both sides one uncle on the mother's side was an admiral in the united states navy relatives farther back distinguished many distinguished relatives on the father's side one of whom was ralph waldo emerson parents notes as an infant j was much disturbed by loud or sharp noises showed superior ability early while still a small child drew diagrams of inventions which proved to be actual parts of machines he had never seen great interest also in astronomy listed stars of the fourth magnitude at present age eleven works in the laboratory with shells doing a grade of work which few university seniors can surpass will soon publish a book on california shells expects to become a scientist four years later age fifteen health improved some lessening of enthusiasm in scientific works on shells accompanied by marked increase of interest in manly sports the expected book has not been finished excellent school marks work done with decided ease social adaptability now average an awakening sense of responsibility average parent rating two point four at this time jay's teachers also testified to his marked improvement along social lines number thirty seven boy m a inferior school work and marked lack of social adaptability tested first at ten eleven mental age fifteen zero i q one hundred and thirty seven eighth grade when tested nearly a year later the i q was one hundred and thirty eight and he was in the first year of high school heredity exceptionally good father an able lawyer mother formerly a teacher in a city normal college many prominent men and women among his relatives one of whom was samuel adams an exceptionally bright boy but a problem for his teachers although his mental age is well above the average in the first year of high school his grades run from c to d he is temperamental and more or less queer easily takes a dislike to teachers or classmates regards his schoolwork with more or less contempt and part of it he refuses to try at all because his schoolwork is poor some of his teachers consider his intelligence only average teachers notes 
an unusual ability to associate facts particularly scientific facts and to repeat from memory one after reading rated four in social adaptability leadership emotional self-control and unselfishness is babyish in his play nervous has muscular twitchings and is easily embarrassed in class is selected by his fellows as the one to tease torment and nickname cries easily however i believe that m will become more adjusted to his surroundings and make a superior man average teacher rating on traits 2.42 parents notes health good no special instruction in childhood except a little he received from a workman on the ranch has been held back but is now allowed to go his own pace reads history scientific works and all kinds of magazines desires to become an inventor average parent rating 1.80 this is one of the few cases in which the parents ratings average higher than those of the teacher later age 13 marks in high school now slightly above average and there is marked improvement in social adaptability and emotional life average parent rating at this time 1.6 number 38 boy a l s poetic talent combined with all-round ability age nine four mental age thirteen two iq one hundred and forty one this child was first brought to our attention as a result of a group test we have not yet had opportunity to learn much about him except that he is considered one of the brightest pupils in the school of the small city where he lives the following poem was composed when he was nine years old it shows remarkable maturity of thought for a child of his age do not worry over trifles though to you they may seem great all your fretting will not help you all your troubles dissipate if your sky is dark and gloomy and the sun is hid from view bravely smile and keep on smiling and your friends will smile with you happiness is so contagious and a smile is never lost then why worry over trifles though your heart seems tempest-tossed therefore go on life's rough journey with an optimistic smile see the world is good to live in and that living is worth while number thirty nine boy j s intensive mental culture in early childhood fine mental balance has a sister who is an infant prodigy age nine six mental age sixteen four i q one hundred and seventy two sixth grade age ten four mental age seventeen eight i q one hundred and seventy one seventh grade in the first examination age nine and a half j passed four tests in superior adult including paper cutting eight digits direct order seven digits reversed order and the ingenuity test special interest attaches to j because he is a brother of martha who at the age of twenty six months was able to read any primer father a lawyer and a man of more than ordinary ability graduated from university at twenty one mother a teacher before marriage maternal grandfather a farmer of common school education and average ability uncles and aunts averaged or somewhat above paternal grandfather a bookkeeper of business college education and average ability paternal grandmother of average ability common school education father's notes j superior ability first evident in third year father accounts for the superiority as due to the fact that we deliberately set ourselves to the task of educating him when he was a young child when j was a mere baby i determined to start his education commencing at the age of two years i adopted artifices to make his play a source of education and kept it at persistently until he was five years old and had acquired the fundamentals of the first three years of school after which i dropped the matter in the case of the second boy i had no time to take that course and did not do so second boy only average father describes j as serious and dreamy finding his great pleasure in reading little interest in tools or machinery quite different from the boisterous happy-go-lucky younger brother if left to his own devices would spend all his leisure reading health always perfect except for scarlet fever at five years average rating on traits two point three five one year later age eleven and a half health good adenoids and tonsils recently removed average of father's rating on traits now one point seven five marked improvement in social adaptability teacher's notes j is a boy of wonderful ability for his years in arithmetic he never draws an unwarranted conclusion or premises anything unnecessary to the conclusion when he started to school he covered the first grade in a half day the second grade in two months the third grade in six months and the fourth grade in two months all but one of the twenty traits graded one by the teacher with special emphasis on the boy's lack of vanity play interests and play life described as normal 
no physical handicaps nervousness or eccentricities of any kind in every respect normal with the exception of superior intelligence number forty henry illustrating the relative independence of i q and schooling scientific ability overshadowed by musical genius extreme poverty as a near neighbor boy henry has been under our observation since the autumn of nineteen ten at that time he was little more than twelve and a half years of age he was tested at fourteen and a half earning the mental age of nineteen i q one hundred and thirty one although the i q is satisfactory it is matched by scores of others among our records but there is only one henry henry had never been to school except for a few months when he was six years old he lived in a little shanty with his semi-invalid mother and was the sole source of income for the support of her and himself he tramped often to the mountains in search of rare wild flowers which he brought home and sold in beautiful bouquets to people who knew him sometimes he weeded lawns or did garden work for his neighbours for some years also he served as janitor for a little rural school near his home his earnings rarely amounted to more than fifteen dollars a month but somehow he and his mother managed to live on this amount henry's mother since dead was a woman of refinement and intellectuality the author of two novels and a number of poems she also wrote essays on sociological questions at least one of which was published in an english periodical of international circulation she was an idealist imbued with advanced notions regarding religion sociology and women's place in the world henry's mother was almost fifty years old when he was born his father was an unsuccessful member of a distinguished family henry's paternal grandfather was an archbishop of ireland and dukes and earls are numbered among his cousins shortly after henry started to school at the age of six years he was one day seized on his way home from school with a strange muscular paralysis he fell to the ground and had to drag himself home chorea set in from which he suffered severe recurrent attacks for years except for occasional twitchings he had fairly recovered at the age of fourteen and somewhat later his recovery was practically complete on account of this nervous tendency however his mother did not see fit to send him to school nor did she give him much formal instruction at home she talked with him endlessly read to him occasionally and sometimes he read to her they discussed religion politics and matters of literature and art we have a list of over three hundred books which henry has read before he was fourteen years of age also bulky notes of extensive conversations which we had with him on such questions as socialism atheism scientific problems etc at fourteen he discussed these matters with greater breadth of knowledge and much deeper understanding than the average university senior no less striking was his ignorance in certain school subjects his spelling was wretched and he had studied no formal arithmetic above the four fundamentals and simple fractions as a boy of a dozen years henry's appearance was odd and interesting in the extreme his speech was quaint and rather drawled and stilted his face was childish but he looked at you with eyes that seemed utterly void of self-consciousness his clothes were often ragged and always ill-fitting his hair hid his ears and straggled down to his shoulders his face and shoulders twitched occasionally with choreic spasms everybody considered henry as queer not to say freakish if employed to weed a lawn he was likely to forget what he was doing while trying to compose and whistle a tune his janitor work was hardly more successful henry had shown promising ability with the violin at the age of five years but his courier had put an end to his musical practice neither violin nor piano was touched again until he was about fifteen years of age his musical talent however survived all the vicissitudes of poverty and illness henry knew that his nervousness and still more the effect of hard labour upon his hands had ruined forever the hope of his becoming a great musical performer but he would become a composer day and night he dreamed of this and wrote out in musical notation numberless compositions at the age of fifteen having practically recovered from his courier henry resolved to gratify a long cherished ambition he decided to purchase a piano he found an old second-hand one and bought it for sixty dollars which sum he managed to save out of his scanty earnings by doing without various necessities of life though he had not tried to play on the piano before within a year he was giving recitals among his university friends within three or four years his playing was quite remarkable shortly after this his playing was brought to the attention of promising musicians in san francisco who with other friends gave him encouragement and help he was placed under the instruction of one of the best music teachers in the west and soon took rank as one of the most promising pupils that instructor had ever had 
at the age of nineteen he spent several months in new york his compositions at this time were pronounced promising by various prominent musicians at the age of twenty without ever having been in school a year in his life henry was made instructor of harmony in the summer school of a great state university he was reappointed for the second year but was soon afterwards taken for military service those who had considered henry as merely a queer child with impossible ideas and exasperating manners and frankness were finally compelled to admit his musical ability even then however he was generally considered a freak in all but his musical ability his general intelligence had never been correctly appraised by the majority of his friends we have seen the verdict of the binet test as a result of many hours of conversation with the boy over a period of many months we are convinced that his ability in science was almost as great as in music before the age of twelve he had read university textbooks in botany his knowledge of california wild flowers at this age was remarkable he had studied seriously the principles of plant breeding and for a time when it seemed impossible to realize his musical ambitions he considered botanical science for his life work he might have done so but for the fact that his education has been too irregular to permit him to enter a university one of the most noticeable things about henry has always been his independence of judgment his opinions in all kinds of matters are quite pronounced and he expresses them without regard for other people's feelings by many acquaintances he is considered rude and ill-mannered this does him injustice he is merely naively honest due both to his temperament and to the influence of his early training it remains to be seen whether henry will become one of the famous musical composers of his day several musical critics of note hope for this outcome if he attains fame as a musician his biographer is almost certain to describe his musical genius as natural and inevitable and to ignore the scientist that he might have been number forty one boy d b indications of real genius unequalled intellectual spontaneity age seven four and two-thirds mental age thirteen seven i q one hundred and eighty four not in school this is the highest intelligence quotient we have ever found and all the supplementary data indicate that there is no other child in our list who equals d in all-round intellectual ability the test was made before a class of about a hundred students at columbia university the day was one of the most uncomfortable in the history of new york city the official temperature for the day being above one hundred degrees the room was close ill-ventilated and wretchedly hot the test began with year nine all of the tests of this group were passed in year ten all the tests were passed except that of drawing designs which fell just short of being satisfactory in year twelve seven of the eight tests were passed with ease the three disarranged sentences were given without a single error in twelve ten and five seconds the five fables were interpreted as follows one hercules and wagon driver if you work yourself you will get help two the milkmaid and her plans do not build castles in the air three the fox and the crow do not listen to flattery four the farmer and the stork if you keep company with bad people you will have to suffer the consequences five the miller and the donkey stick to one way in year fourteen the induction test was passed without error the rule being given as follows you multiply by two each time the other tests passed in this year were president and king and arithmetical reasoning there was only one success out of three trials in the clock tests in average adult the fables and box tests were passed although the examination covered a wide range of tests it required only forty five minutes the responses were perfectly natural almost playful and there was no waiting for applause no appearance whatever of vanity although d was not enrolled in school at the time of the test he regularly attended the playground activities at the horace mann practice school previously he had attended a kindergarten all of his teachers had recognized his phenomenal ability father russian jewish mother polish jewish the father is an advertising man and writer and has published three books of fiction the mother is a high school graduate did some work in a university and has written short stories and poems for various periodicals maternal grandfather a businessman of high intellectuality two cases of unusual musical ability on the mother's side also several distinguished rabbis maternal grandfather a businessman of unusual mechanical ability fond of making and solving puzzles the paternal grandmother taught herself to read english late in life rabbis on this side also d is an only child 
the mother is a woman of exceptionally keen and judicial mind and has kept bulky notes on d's mental development since he was a baby she has furnished us with the following interesting items of information d stood alone between five and six months walked at nine months and talked at about a year first teeth between four and five months nursed for only five months no illness except measles and a light case of chicken pox no physical defects sleeps about eleven and a half hours played with anagrams when a baby and learned to read as gradually and naturally as he learned to talk at three without us knowing he could do it he picked up a new book suitable for children of nine years and read it through intelligently has had some private lessons in music and gymnastics has also taken a few lessons in interpretive dancing dresses and undresses alone bathes himself cleans his teeth alone and tends to his bodily needs plays ball bats and skates handles mechano models requiring deft fingers typewrites rapidly using only two fingers on each hand taught himself printing and typewriting reads very rapidly if he likes a book will return again and again to it memorizing the parts he specially cares for probably averages eight or ten hours a week reading leaves his book willingly to play but goes back to it when play is over recently a world atlas baseball guides and baseball news in the daily papers have all furnished him with what he calls important work has read a great deal of shakespeare with a particular liking for historical plays pericles is his favorite his knowledge of shakespeare characters is amazing reads the book of knowledge and as many animal stories as he can lay his hands on desires to travel in order to see and learn the habits of wild animals has read every history book in the house including gibbon and grot he criticized gibbon as having left too much out in writing about rome among his papers are sundry notes marked important things the scottish kings did list of roman emperors and what they ruled over etc this showed that he reads to find out things which he considers important when taken to the public library he invariably chooses books of history he is very fond of fairy tales but has not been permitted to read many d will carry through his projects extending over long periods it took him several days to complete a map of the apartment drawn to scale many weeks off and on to complete a geographical map of his imaginary country borning town and for a year he spent much time recording foreign state automobiles sighted in new york with directions for recognizing the various licenses as notebooks and papers covered with baseball data keeps data embodying special features of maps charts etc in reading shakespeare pays careful attention to the notes on the text which in the edition he is reading night are voluminous a recent interest which has taken the place of the foreign autos is that of the trolley system in new york city his pockets bulge with notes and transfers together with marbles with which he plays at every opportunity plays games of cards a baseball game and a question game the latter is an information contest in the game of characters his side always wins for he has an inexhaustible supply of shakespeare characters to draw upon similarly when it comes to cities or rivers such sources as russia furnish him with a supply which no one else can compete with other games which he likes are various kinds of solitaire chess and quite a difficult game shown to him by a teacher of mathematics a game in which he outplays every one but his unerring calculation in what he called its double corner the foregoing notes refer to d's reading and ability prior to august nineteen seventeen in march nineteen eighteen the mother writes as follows his shakespeare interests hold but he has read recently much less history has developed an interest in the scientific articles of the book of knowledge recently showed me a toy telescope which he had made out of his old microscope and mounted on the steel parts of his mechano spends hours over his toy train tracks once calculated how long it would take his little train to run a mile at the rate it went around his track measuring in the center of the track he explained to be sure to get the exact answer last year his expressed vocational ambition was to be a baseball player later he said that while he had not given up his plan to be a baseball player he had decided also to be an author this was while he was deep in his ventures of book writing having begun three or four different books in the fall of nineteen seventeen and finished a play for his mother's birthday he had begun a book called borningtown with chapters and headings already planned also another book called facts about borningtown and washabet with a table of contents and headings for fifty chapters of the text so far there are five typewritten pages and one illustration a third book is about bully woolly or the magical egg another new interest is the dictionary he is making of borningtown 
Many of the words which he makes up for this dictionary are intended as improvements on the English language. For example, smallen to make small. His interest in words and their derivations led us to begin this year a little formal Latin, at which he spends about an hour a week. His ability to analyse and classify have made it quite easy for him to learn thus far the first and second declusions of nouns and adjectives and a few conjugations. He learned to count to add and to subtract by means of playing cards, which were among his first playthings. Formal arithmetic was begun when he was seven years old by spending about an hour a week upon it. This year he was giving about an, an hour each week to algebra and about as much to geometry, with his father as teacher. He has no difficulty with either subject, often sets himself problems in geometry to solve. In the study of music, has applied his ability to analyse and arrange so that he has made big strides in musical theory and wants to compose melodies to fit the words of the poems he selects. Conscientiousness. Refuses to lie. Clings tenaciously to a standard which he recognises as desirable. Used to mark himself for what he considered good writing and was quick to acknowledge poor work. Obeys instructions regarding errands, etc above average in unselfishness, makes plans to give pleasure to others, and often, with a manifest effort of his own volition, leaves the best or biggest for someone else, loves to share his pleasures, will remark a selfishness in others. The above account contains so many things it is hard to associate with a chronological age of seven years that the reader may be inclined to allow something for maternal prejudice. To do so in this case would be a mistake. The Binet tests made under extraordinary unfavourable conditions indicate a level of mental ability not far below to which is normal for children of fourteen years we have also the testimony of kindergarten and playground instructors in the horace mann school which agree thoroughly with the notes furnished by the mother the average rating given by the mother on the twenty trace was one point nine three that of the kindergarten teacher who knew d best one point nine his former kindergarten teacher says d is a most remarkable boy his greatest difficulty has been social adaptability, but his experience in kindergarten and playground has brought him well up towards the normal in this respect. Reads the Allade and Shakespeare and publishes a weekly playground newspaper. One who desired further proof of D's exceptional intelligence would find it in a convincing abundance in any issue of this newspaper, which is a rare essay in journalism for a boy of seven years. It is a one-sheet, three-column affair typed all of the composition is done by D, who prints it on his typewriter. There is a joke section, an advertising section, a news section, and various extras and incidentals from time to time. The jokes are often such as would not be understood by children below the mental level of 12 years. It will be seen that D is far superior in general ability than any of the other children we have described. His ability seems to compare favourably with that of Francis Galton, who in childhood showed similar indications of genius. Whether the promise of the present will be fulfilled, only the future can tell. However, considering his fine balance of personal moral and intellectual traits, there is every reason to believe that he will become a distinguished man. Indications of Superior Endowment Doubtless the reader has sensed a degree of monotony in the above descriptions of superior children. Such children show the usual individual differences in temperament and personality, but intellectually they have much more in common. Certain qualities are mentioned again and again by both parent and teacher. Phrases most often used in giving indications of superior endowment are the following. Alert beyond his years. Has such keen powers of observation. Shows a passionate desire to learn. Asks endless questions. Is interested in everything. Is ambitious to excel. Gets the highest school marks. Writes such wonderful examination papers. Has such a fine command of language has fine reasoning powers, shows independence of judgment, is an original thinker, answers always to the point, has a keen sense of humour, has unusual power of concentration, is more dependable than other children of his age, conscientious to a fault, such a lovable child, etc. Many are also described as exceptionally truthful, sympathetic, generous, thoughtful of others, and endowed with a sense of moral responsibility which shows itself in a willingness to work and to deny themselves for social ends. Other symptoms of superior endowment receiving frequent mention include the early learning of nursery jingles, ease of memorizing, learning without instruction, to count and to name the days of the week and the months of the year, rapidity of learning to read, 
learning to read without instruction by means of newspapers, advertisements, or telephone books, desire to write, love of reading, preference for worthwhile books, liking for dictionaries and encyclopedias, absorption with hobbies, such as collections, wireless telegraphy, and educational games. These indications are mentioned so often as to appear well nigh universal with this class of children. Only a few have traits that are undesirable. Several are more or less nervous. A few are exceptionally timid. Three or four are somewhat vain. A few dislike the routine and restraint of the school. One is rather lazy. One lacks affection. One shows symptoms of incorrigibility at home. And several are below average in leadership and social adaptability. Making proper social adjustments is perhaps the most difficult problem for these superior children. Their intellectual superiority tends to set them apart from children of their own age. While they are at the same time prevented from equal association with older children, both by the lack of physical strength and by the relative immaturity of their play instincts. Number 42, for example, who at the age of 7 tests above 13 and a half, obviously cannot compete with average 13 year old boys in the usual games of physical skill, nor is he a near enough adolescence to share their mental outlook. His play interests are in many respects like those of ordinary children of seven years, yet he is largely cut off from the natural association with such children by the fact that he speaks a different language. His vocabulary is so grown up that his playfellows often cannot understand what he is talking about. Considering such difficulties, the wonder is that only two or three of our superior children are noticeably queer socially, and that only one borders on the outcast. Objections to grading superior children by mental age The question may be raised whether the difficulty of social adjustment does not constitute a serious objection to the plan of grading superior children according to the mental age since it would associate them in classwork with children who are several years older. This danger, however, is largely offset by the opportunities which the playground offers for making congenial acquaintances. The injury done by having such a child recite with children whom he cannot compete with in play must be very slight compared to the intellectual and moral injury which is wrought by keeping him away at his tasks which are too easy to command his best efforts. One solution would be to have the child of exceptional ability remain out of school every second or third year. This would tend to keep him in class with children of about his own age, while at the same time requiring a reasonable amount of effort to keep up in schoolwork. The plan assumes, however, that the school authorities will allow such a child to skip the grade which his fellows take while he is out of school. If this were not allowed, and often it would not be, the situation would only be made worse. The plan of periodic rests has the further objection that by depriving the child of the social opportunities which the school offers, it would make his isolation more complete. Besides, there are few homes which could be expected to fill the child's free year with experiences of real educational value. Opportunity Classes for Superior Children The responsibility for the right education of superior children belongs with the school. If the opportunities now offered are not suitable, it is the duty of the school to provide something better. While some relief is furnished by an elastic system of promotion which will allow the superior child to skip a half grade occasionally, this should be regarded as a makeshift rather than a final solution of the problem. The contribution of the school must be more positive and more educational. If the needs of the superior children are to be met, special classes and special courses will have to be provided. The advantages of such classes are many. 1. They allow children to make rapid progress without skipping vital parts of the subject matter. 2. They allow a broadening and enriching of the course of study because of the larger accomplishments possible to superior minds. 3. They are a discouragement to vanity because the level of competition it raises and the measure of a child's success depends upon his relative standing in the class. 4. They ensure the mental and moral training which can come only from sustained effort. 5. They furnish an atmosphere which is intellectually much more stimulating than that found in the average class. 6. Since they bring together children of similar age and attainments, they go far to solve the problem of social adjustment. Wherever opportunity classes for bright children have been tried, they have proved an immediate and surprising success. The children are touched by new life and inspired with new enthusiasm. That two or three grades are usually covered in one year is perhaps a matter of secondary importance compared with the intellectual awakening and the intensification of effort which such classes provoke. The results have been so uniformly successful that the special class for gifted children may be considered to have passed the experimental stage. The following illustration is typical. 
In February 1917, an opportunity class was formed in Louisville, Kentucky. It consisted of 21 children selected by means of Binet tests. The intelligence quotients ranged from 120 to 167, 15 being above 135. The class covered the work of an entire grade in a half year. Besides the accomplishment of this work, the children learned to use with a considerable degree of freedom 400 words in a conversational German. They also composed the words and music of a spring song and an operetta. The class did this work happily and with ease. Home study was discouraged except where it was a matter of great desire, and then it was limited to 20 minutes. In character and disposition, these children are conceited by all who know them to be superior. They are not conceited or puffed up by their selection for the class. Miss Race, uh, from whom the above is quoted, states that whatever touches of conceit were present at the beginning of the class were largely eradicated before the end of the term. A similar class has been conducted in New York City by Miss May Irwin and another in Urbana, Illinois, under the direction of Professor Whipple. In both cases, the results agreed in a striking way with those of the Louisville experiment. Class sectioning according to mental ability. When the school system is very small, or when other conditions prevent the formation of a special class for the children of exceptional ability, their needs may be to a certain extent provided for by the division of the regular classes into three sections, a slow-moving, a normal, and a fast-moving group. For example, in a second-grade class of 40 pupils, the group might contain 10, 20, and 10 pupils, respectively. These could be instructed by the same teacher but as separate classes making different progress and doing work of somewhat different quality. The work of the three sections could be so organized that their separate instruction would be by no means an added burden to the teacher. This chapter has been largely devoted to descriptions of children of very exceptional superiority, probably not more than one child in a hundred tests above 135, and not more than one in two hundred above 140. The children who test between 120 and 135 are several times as numerous and almost equally in need of special advantages. It is from this group that the majority of teachers, doctors, lawyers, ministers and other professional men and women come. Special classes for 8 or 10% of the pupils are perhaps not feasible and may not be necessary, but much can be done by the sectioning of classes in the manner just indicated and by making the system of promotion more elastic. End of chapter 11 of The Intelligence of School Children Read by Leon Harvey